morning. Welcome back to the Automacorn Knits. If you're a returning viewer, if this is your first time, thank you so much for checking me out and I hope that you enjoy what you see. This is a once a month or so podcast about knitting and crocheting, yarn dyeing, designing knitwear and crochet wear, and my life in a log cabin in the forest, basically. Um, I have a lot to share with you today, so I think we'll get started. Um, I want to start with finished objects, but let me just start by saying it looks like I've been knitting a lot, and I have, but I feel like most of the projects are fails. So when you're trying to design your own patterns, sometimes you're going to have failures. In fact, probably 50% of the time I have failures. And this is an example of a couple of those. So um, the first one is here. I'll just hold it up. And I'm going to be putting inserting video for each project so that you get a closer look because I realize it's harder to show you on the camera. Like like on video, I mean. So here's the first one. It is a cropped pullover sweater um, with this kind of fancy collar with some eyelets and um, it has a split hem. Split hem. This is a uh, twisted rib, which I think looks really neat, and this was knit with a strand of fingering weight yarn and a strand of mohair in, mm, I think I have some left over that right here. That was the mohair, it's not, it's dyed, but a gentle, almost a beige. Um, and then I have the rest of the yarn here. This was some sock yarn that I had hand dyed uh, with subtle specks of pinks. And so the, I thought the speckling really came out well on this. It's evenly distributed. I didn't um, change skeins or alternate skeins but I was so happy with how even those, those speckles turned out. Um, I'll try it on. This is where I felt like it was a fail. As soon as I put it on me, I didn't like what I saw, but let me just see if that's still, if I still feel that way um, over this blouse. It's meant to be boxy, oversized, but I think that this might just be too big for me and that's why I'm not loving it. Um, yeah, this is the wrong blouse, but you get an idea. It gives you an idea of how it looks, right? Um, I just don't know. Maybe if it were in a smaller size, I would like it more and I would continue on with this pattern. But as it is, I just think I'm going to um, call it a fail and not, not go any further with this. But it is so soft and so, I just wish, I wish I loved it. I really wish I loved it. The back is not an eyelet. It is more twisted rib. But, you know, give me your opinion. What do you think? It's knit in... The only thing that seemed on the whole sweater um, are the sides here, this small amount of 
of sides. And that's all seamed, which I'm really proud of that seam, by the way. I think that came out really neat. I've gotten so much better at mattress stitch. Here's the other one. Pretty difficult to see that seam, but it's there. And so yeah, really simple knit. And just let me know what you think. It's okay, I won't be hurt, I promise. My feelings will not be hurt if you say, I don't like the way that looks. It's okay. But I do need you to be honest. Um, you know, what do you think of, what do you think of this? So that's number one, what I consider a fail. Um, here's number two. So this is a yoked pullover, knit in one piece with mohair, two strands of mohair held together, and then this lacy eyelet section around the yoke. I envisioned this being um, really cute, like tucked into jeans or even wearing it with like a high-waisted skirt or trousers, but when I put it on, it was huge. And this was, I always knit my samples, or I try to, in my size, which is a medium, but sometimes I can be between a small and a medium. Lately, I've been much more closer toward a medium. I definitely put on some weight, but um, when I put this on, it just, is enormous on me and I didn't look I didn't look right it just didn't look good so I may have inadvertently knit a size large even maybe even an extra large that's a lot of it's <laughs> a lot of fabric so I have no idea what I'll do with this um, I had the thought of maybe um, kind of like doing like a giveaway and just giving away some of the samples that either don't fit me or that never became a pattern or that I just don't love and maybe one of you would love it. Who knows, right? So I was thinking about doing that um, and this would be one of, one of those pieces that would go in that pile. So that's not really going to happen. I'm not going to be, probably not going to be turning that into a pattern. Um, now this next one is a crescent shawl. This was knit with thick and thin wool, merino wool, um, and some worsted weight wool. So the blue is, let me see if I have those yarns up here, I do. Um, here is, here's the thick and thin. As you can see, it's a merino. It's very soft, but it gets it gets thin and it gets thick, and then that's just the nature of this beautiful hand-spun wool. It's lovely and thick, and then I just went with a worsted weight in this beautiful color blue, which I am loving this color lately. I've been looking for some tops in this color, but I'm having a hard time finding like the fabric that I like in this color. So, um, like I said, this is a crescent shawl. Um, it has tassels. It's very, it's very big. Uh, here's one of the tassels, which I'm probably gonna have to fix that up. It's a little messy. I think I may 
I may cut it off maybe here. Yeah, I think that would look nice. And um, it is warm. It is cozy, squishy. It has all of, uh, has a lot of things you, you would like in a shawl. But it's just, I think it's too big. I think it's too uh, wide. I'm not going to be able to show you just how wide it is, but it's wide. So again, I do not, I mean, I have this pattern all written out, even typed out. Let me know if you think this crescent shawl is worth publishing. And uh, just please comment and let me know your thoughts. And I will not be offended if you say, that thing is hideous, I'd never, I'd never knit it, forget it. Just let me know. I need your opinion. Oh, and by the way, here is the mohair. Here's the mohair yarn left over from that yoked pullover. This is the, the eyelet section is this be beautiful silver gray. And I held two strands together for that. Um, yeah, so those are some fails, I would say. If I had to classify them, I would, I would definitely call those fails. But, let's see, now, finished objects. Last time we met, I had started, um, I had one sock finished, I believe, I believe, in the, uh, in my new Tedon Magic Eel socks. So I used some of the beautiful new Tedon wool that I talk about a lot from Sweden. I wanted to try out a pair of socks um, in this rustic Swedish breed wool. It doesn't have any nylon in it, but I ended up doing two strands um, in the heel section. You could see the color difference very clearly, and two strands in the toe. And let me tell you, so far, there, and I've been wearing these almost every day, um, there is nothing to show you for wear. I'm pretty impressed with this fabric. The only negative I would say is that one of these, here you think you could see it, one of the cups is a bit bigger than the other, and that bothers me. That tends to want to come down a little bit on my foot. So when I knit another pair, I'm going to definitely add some probably mohair to, um, to the cuff so that hopefully that will help that problem. But um, I am in love with these socks. I love the way they feel on my foot. I love the fabric that New Tedon makes, especially using um, a US one. And I plan to make a whole bunch more of these socks because I have a lot of, I don't know if you could see that shelf up there, is my New Tedon collection. And I want to have all the socks in New Tedon now. So that's my plan. Um, and I'll keep you posted still as I continue to wear these. Now the only thing is I'm not wearing them very often um, to go, I'm not going out really anywhere. So I'm not getting a lot of chances to wear them like in my shoes on, on long distance. But I'm simply basing my um, opinions on how they're wearing as I walk around on wood floors. And I walk a lot. Um, so yeah, so far so good. I promise though, if they start to break down or if I find any holes, I'll let you know. So far so good. Oh, and I'm planning on knitting up some house slippers. Knitting a house slipper in New Tedon, if anyone's interested in that. 
Um, speaking of Nutidin, I had told you last time that we met that I had released the Fox Whisper. And um, just a reminder that that pattern is out, is available, and is doing really well. Thank you everyone who's purchased it already. My testers did such a fabulous job on this. Um, some of the photos they've gotten are just gorgeous. But just to remind you again, this was a hooded cape shawl with this beautiful border and a pico bind off because why not? And it's got a nice long drapey collar in the back and then it's held together with this little fox clasp. Now some of the testers are putting on two clasps and it looks really pretty, so one just below the other down here. And they are also adding felt. If I didn't mention this already, if I mentioned this already I apologize, but they are including felt I did not do that, but right here on both sides so that it's uh, really, really sturdy. And so far, everyone is very, very pleased um, with the end result. And yeah, so that is available for purchase everywhere that I sell patterns. Now, a pattern that will be coming out, and I'm hoping to get this out, <clears throat> on, what did I decide, Sunday, March 7th. So this is the gathering vest. It is still being test knit. This is the front. I'll put up photos again for you to see. The uh, side has this really fun rib and um, I have had testers that used three different colored buttons, like bright colored buttons, which looks really beautiful. Um, a couple of my testers decided to leave off this bit of ribbing on the neck because they wanted it to be more open, which I appreciate, and I think that was a great idea. And I think that's it for changes. Um, so far, everyone's happy with their finished vest. The only trouble we're having is with some of the very large sizes because this does go up to 4x. Um, this was the first time I was able to get a lot of the bigger sizes tested, but the smaller sizes, the extra small and the small, uh, I was not able to get tested. So if you're interested, if you would like to try to knit up this vest in a small or an extra small, I would love to hear from you. Just reach out and the test knit officially ends in the end of this week on Friday, but of course I would give you uh, more time to knit those smaller sizes. I was able to finish the vest really quickly in two or three days, um, but obviously, you know, it depends on how much time you have to devote. But I love this, I love this um, vest, and the yarn that I used talked about it before, but this is Kramer Yarns Mouch Chunky. Um, this was sent to me um, in for free in return uh, for a review on the yarn, and I absolutely highly recommend it to anyone. The color that I knit the vest in is Spice. They sent this extra skein. I think I had asked for it thinking I might do color work, and this is called, the color is called Sandstone such a pretty color um, but I never ended up using that that one but anyway this yarn is gorgeous um, it just has so many different colors in it and it makes it really fun to knit with but yeah so stay tuned for this pattern release of the gathering vest on March 7th Um, that brings me to works in progress, and I have just two going on right now. The first one is a crochet project.
this is another scrappy blanket. I just made a scrappy blanket and sent it down to my daughter, her husband, and their two girls, my granddaughters. Um, just as I, I included a card, you know, that since I can't be there right now to hug you, please accept this gift as a warm hug from Nana. And they were just thrilled with it, so I'm so happy I did that. But of course I had to start another one. I normally use the Hydrangea Stripes pattern by Attic24, which I love that pattern. I plan to make, I don't know, many more blankets with it. But I wanted to just do something on my own this time, make something up. And this is what I, this is what I came up with. And so far, so good. I'm really happy with how it's turning out. I'm trying to use a lot more of my lighter colors um, rather than dark colors. You know, I'm trying to be a little bit more conscientious of what colors I'm choosing and when. And I'm also trying to include this. Oh, where is it? This skein here as like I'm putting this one in um, a little more consistently so that you see there are whiter, white stripes, whitish stripes throughout spaced evenly. So that was my goal on this. Um, but I think it's coming out really well and if I do end up liking this uh, I'll I'll release the pattern, but very easy. But I just think it has just enough solid versus the holes to make it look beautiful. So there it is, and it's living in this project bag right now, which is it's not going to fit in this bag for very long at all. But it's a nice, good sized bag. This was, I believe, from the steady, the steady Hand on Etsy. She makes beautiful bags. I think it was, anyway. I'm, I might be wrong. I don't think I see a label. Um, but that's okay. And then I have my little Go Veg pin, which I am not a vegetarian. Um, but I love the pin, anyway, because it's a sheep. So I wish I was a vegetarian. It is freezing outside today. Um, it, we woke up, it was zero Fahrenheit and minus 22 degrees with the wind chill factor, so it felt like minus 22. And we did get a lot of, not a lot, we did get snow last night, so Joe had to go out and plow in this freezing weather, and he was thinking about waiting until later, but it's not supposed to warm up at all, so. The wind is so strong. Um, yeah, you wouldn't want to be outside today, that's for sure. So, uh, works in progress. So my second work in progress is the work in progress. I am over the moon excited about. right now. Um, if you've been following me for a while, you certainly know my goal with patterns is always keep it simple. Beautiful things can be simple things to knit or crochet. And so when I started thinking about this project, it all started from this failure. It all started from this. I said, you know, I just don't have enough yoked sweaters. I don't even, mm, I offer raglan, but I don't think I offer a single yoked pattern. And I thought, well, we need to change that because yoked sweaters are probably the most satisfying sweaters to knit. Um, of course, with everything, there's pros and cons, but what I love the most about the yoked sweater is just how simple it is. Very little brain power is used, um, especially when you do it the way that I did this one. You, they just, I feel like they just knit themselves, and it's so much fun just to see how the yoke develops, 
and then once you separate for the sleeves, you just get that wonderful stockinette stitching for, for stockinette knitting for miles, and I love that. So, very happy. Um, but this is not my first attempt at this. This is probably my third. I was determined to have a cast on, first of all, um, that wasn't a, um, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Ah, brain. There's a, there's a certain cast on that you, you would typically use for a, um, a neck for a yoked sweater. And I found it to be a little bit, just a little bit limiting for a brand new knitter. So I wanted to come up with something that everyone could do, even if it's their first garment. So I believe I've done that with the neckline. Of course, I'm not going to give away the secret because <laughs> it's a pattern. Then I, um, I wanted to make sure, because with a yoked design, you typically have four or five increases that are evenly spaced, you know, till you get to the, um, the biggest part of your body here. And um, a lot of those increases are make ones, make one lefts probably more often, but whatever, make one left, make one right. And I don't mind doing those increases at all, but I'm an experienced knitter and I did not want, again, any limitations for a newer knitter. So I did what I consider to be the simplest increase, worked them out through the yoke and you, I cannot see them. Like, I cannot find them. So I am just thrilled with that. And then lastly, I knew I wanted to add in some kind of a design element, some kind of color and texture. So I added in some mohair. I added in uh, a contrasting color. So let's start with the main color, though, shall we? This is the main color. And this is a beautiful sock yarn in tweed that I dyed using walnut and I think there was some matter root in here as well. I have, um, I have a full skein here that I can show you. It's really beautiful. I love this color. It, it almost is pinkish. And I think if you're going to have a brown, it's, it's really nice to have. Um, this tone. Oh, I was wrong. I used cooch to dye this, not walnut. It, they look very, very similar. It is 85% Superwash BFL, which is Blueface Lester, uh, and 15% Donegal Nep, Nep Sock Yarn, 438 yards per hank. Um, I have, this is my first skein. Look how much I still have left, though. That's a lot. And that's the, that's the main color I'm using. The mohair is that same mohair I showed you before. Um, and I want to say this was dyed in the same bath. Yeah, they go so well together. Love that. And this last color I'm going to show you is also a sock yarn, but it's not a, it's not a tweed. It's not a BFL either, but it's beautiful. And I dyed this last month. I don't have a lot left. These were two mini skeins that I had. Um, although I have a full skein over here that I had balled up, but I never turned into anything, but it might give you a better, better idea of the color. It's, it's a lot of pinks and berries and coppers and I'm just so in love with it and there's some cream too um, so yeah you've got the bigger one and the little one I'm planning th though to only need to use um, the two minis and not dig into this bigger one all right so let me not have you wait any longer here is I'm going to make sure my uh, stitches aren't coming off I should have finished my row, as, as you know, a lot of knitters say that on podcasts. Um, but here it is. Oh, tied up to my foot. Here it is. I'm so in love with this. 
I'm on the plain stockinette section now. And I'm going to insert some video so you could see this close up. Obviously, this lace section here will open up once it's been blocked. And you've got some nice texture going on there. I'm very, very happy. Oh, I should have shown you a little closer. Um, the neckline. You might notice it has this cute little eyelet every so often, which I love. I'm really happy I incorporated that in. So yes, now that I am that I have separated for the sleeves and joined to knit the body in the round, I am just going to be knitting round and round for a bit, which is fun. Uh, and I do plan to have some other elements in this design that are going to be special. So stay tuned for this. Now I'm pretty sure, almost 100%, that it's going to be a short sleeve pullover for the spring. For those days when it's still a little cool, you need something, but you don't need to be, you know, wool head to toe. Um, I'm knitting this pullover with US 5 needles. Um, I think that's just perfect for the fabric because it's, you know, it's light and, but not, no holes really or anything like that. And I think the thing that I'm the most excited about is that I really struggle with putting colors together and I just think I nailed it this time and I, I couldn't be happier. So yeah, yay. Yay, yay, yay. So happy. I'm sure that I'll need to use another skein, but yeah, I've got a lot left so far, so, so fun. Okay, I'm going to check on my notes so I don't miss anything. I can do acquisitions. Valentine's Day, um, I had been looking, searching for uh, an Aaron cable, you know, all over cabled, um, oversized fisherman's wool knit in Ireland kind of pullover. So I looked and looked and looked on eBay and of course I, I wanted something used. I didn't want something brand new. I way prefer to buy things used and was picky though. I just, I wanted it to be just right. You know, you just, you want just the right cables. You want just the right color. You want just the right size. So I found this women's large 100% uh, wool. It's by Aaron Crafts and it was made in Ireland. There's the tag. And here it is. Isn't it gorgeous? But look what's in the middle of the chest. A heart! I thought how perfect. And the back is just gorgeous. Every time I wear this, and I've been wearing this a lot, I have to stare at the cables and touch them. Um, now I have, I can only wear this outside. Once I come back in, I have to take this off quickly. But I'll tell you what, I no longer feel sorry for sheep because this, when you're wearing it outside in, you know, New Hampshire winter in the mountains, it's frigid outside and I am just sitting there, I think I have mohair in my eye, um, just as warm as I could be cozy comfy no wind is getting through this and it is oversized but not too much right the sleeves are just mm, they're perfect it's not really showing you much but if anything though I'd like to oh so I should finish the story so um, Joe knew I'd been looking and he ended up surprising me with this for Valentine's Day mainly because of the heart so Super happy with this.
um, and he said he only paid $40, which is such a good price when you think about how much wool and how much time and, um, but I do want to try to find another one, hopefully when the prices are even more like clearance, when people are on eBay are selling their used clothes and they realize that the season's changing, it's getting warmer in a lot of places. And I'm hoping to get a men's, medium or large, doesn't matter, um, cabled cardigan. That'll be my next hunt. And these are the kinds of things you'll have forever. You can't kill unless you put it in the dryer by accident or hot water or warm water. Then you could definitely ruin this. This would probably fit a child after that. <laughs> um... Oh, I wanted to talk to you, um, first of all, for chatter. We're on, the, we're on to chatter. Thank you so much for all of your lovely comments on my last podcast when I talked about having my feelings hurt uh, by a comment that a, um, a customer had made to me. And you were so understanding and so just really reassuring and kind and wonderful and I wanted to try to answer everyone's message but I really didn't have time to do that so I just wanted to thank everyone sincerely from my heart that that really meant a lot to me and it was funny because some of you were like why would you let that bother you and others completely understood because you're probably sensitive like me um, but I, it's interesting because ever since I did did that segment um, I've heard other podcasters talking about it. Um, I had someone reach out to me and tell me that there was another really big podcaster who has had some really mean comments thrown her way on, on, on YouTube. And I've been really lucky and I haven't, but then I was watching another podcast that I really enjoy, um, rather new to me. It's called 50 Fabulous Knits. Pia is her name. Um, and Pia lives in Denmark and she has a beautiful, beautiful aesthetic. She is beautiful. Um, everything she knits is beautiful and she's really, really a well, you should definitely check out her podcast. Um, but it was interesting because she, on the episode before last, I believe it was, or it could have been the last one, she started talking about how uh, and I won't get into all the details because you can just go watch it and listen to her talk about it because it's private. It's her own personal, you know, thing. But she was criticized pretty severely on her podcast for something that she said for a decision that she had made in her life. And it really, really hurt her feelings and she talked about it a lot. Um, and it, it, I think it was so hurtful to her that she said, you know, I'm going to try to turn this around. And she came up with um, a make-along that she's calling Knit and Knit and Be Kind. But it's not just for knitting. You can crochet or felt or spin. But she's the hashtag is Knit and Be Kind now, where um, anything that you do with your knitting that's kind. So maybe you are, uh, maybe somebody gifted you the yarn kindness. Maybe um, uh, you're knitting a project with a friend. Maybe you're knitting something for a family member. Um, maybe you're just uh, practicing self-kindness while you're knitting. You know, saying these self-affirming -aff things to yourself that lift you up. Um, there are so, so many ways you can incorporate your knitting into this make-along. But I am definitely participating. And if you feel like you'd like to participate as well, I do hope you'll enter that make-along. Um, Pia will have some prizes, I'm sure. And she's going to um, announce those winners on April 21st. So, yeah, you can join just by using that hashtag on Instagram. I don't remember uh, Pia saying that she had a Ravelry group yet um, for this, but have you, I wanted to ask you a question based on this um, and wonder, have you 
Have you had your feelings hurt on social media? Specifically talking about social media. Has someone been cruel to you or mean to you or said something in, in poor taste to you that stopped you in your tracks? And I know this is probably all happening because it's so easy to hide behind a screen and be mean, but I still don't get it. I guess I never will. Has it ever happened to you? Please, I'd love to talk about it. Um, I think it's an important conversation. Um, I think finding ways to handle it is the most important thing we can talk about. And that comes with practice and just um, life experience, I think. But I was just curious if anyone else is seeing that this as a real problem nowadays. And will you be joining us for this make-along? I think that's just about everything I wanted to talk about. Um, we are still quarantining as much as possible. I can't remember the last time I saw someone. I guess it was Christmas. But I um, do plan to get down to Connecticut to celebrate my granddaughter's first birthday, which is coming up at the end of March. So happy March, everyone. I hope that this month brings you joy and peace and lots of knitting time. Thank you so much for watching. And if you like this show, I'd love it if you'd subscribe and hit the bell notification if you'd like to know when my next podcast is out. Um, talk to you soon. Bye.